This podcast is for informational purposes only and is not an offer or solicitation of an offer to buy or sell securities. SNN Network, SNN Inc., and the Planet Microcap Podcast and the representatives are not licensed brokers, broker dealers, market makers, investment bankers, investment advisors, analysts, or underwriters. We do not recommend any companies discussed. We may buy and sell securities in any company mentioned and may profit in the event those securities rise in value. We recommend you consult with a professional investment advisor, broker, or legal counsel before purchasing or selling any securities referenced in this podcast. Welcome to the Planet Microcap Podcast. I'm your host, Robert Kraft. Thank you all so much for the support and for tuning in. Do me a quick favor. If you like what you hear at Planet Microcap, please take two seconds and give us five stars on Spotify or Apple. This helps with the search engines so that more folks can also discover and engage with all things microcap stocks. The Planet Microcap Showcase Vegas, happening April 30 through May 2nd, 2022 at the Paris Hotel and Casino is right around the corner. Our event brings together the best investors and thought leaders in microcap, quality microcap investing opportunities, and above all else, the most fun and highest return on your time that you could ask for. If you'd like to register to participate, please visit planetmicrocapshowcase.com. See you in Vegas. My guest on the show today is Maj Swedan, founder and editor, and Jan Svenda, senior equity analyst at geoinvesting.com. I welcome back my friends Maj and Jan to discuss their latest venture, MS Microcap Cliff Notes, and their tier one quality microcap index. As some of you may know, we run an index as well called the Planet Microcap Index that we use for educational purposes, only to better understand how the general microcap market is performing with specific rules that allow for smaller, relatively illiquid names, growthy, pre-revenue, unprofitable names to be included. Maj and Jan launched an index where, as it states on the MS Cliff Notes website, and I quote here, the qualification of a stock to be added to the index is determined by quality, valuation, price momentum indicators, multi-bagger potential, qualitative analysis, and market cap, end quote. And, and another quote here, the rebalancing of the MSM index occurs on an active basis, not just quarterly or monthly, end quote. I think indices like this are necessary because you could take one look at our index at Planet Microcap and you'd be very correct to think that the microcap space has been in the doldrums for two plus years. However, when you look at an index that assesses more qualitative factors, you see that the tier one quality index, for example, has a current return of 27.6% and an average peak return of 76.84%. I wanted to better understand Maj and Jan's criteria for inclusion, as well as what differentiates their index from being just another model portfolio. By the way, I also wanted to say that Maj will be hosting his tier one uh, track in Vegas again this year. That was very popular last year. And we got a number of really interesting companies as well to be on that, that will be interviewed by Maj in a fireside chat. So also be sure to check that out if you can make it to Vegas. We also discussed a number of stocks during our interview today, specifically CXDO, MTRX, and DRX on the TSX. Maj and Jan are shareholders of CXDO, but do not currently own MTRX or DRX on the TSX. Maj and Jan also may or may not own companies that comprise their tier one quality microcap index. Please see MS Microcaps, Cliff Notes, and Geo Investing for full disclosure. Thank you again for tuning into the Planet Microcap podcast, and please enjoy my interview with Maj Swedan and Jan Svenda. Maj, Jan, good to see you guys. How you doing? Hey, buddy. How you doing, man? Oh, you know, just uh, what's up, Jan? Yeah, uh, it's been a long time. Good, been, to, good to be back. It has been a while, and you know, we're just you know managing through our this microcap universe that we call home. And uh, trying to figure out ways in which to help folks, you know, better understand either how they're they're performing on their own and just in general what's been going on. But the main reason I had you guys on today was really specifically on that front. You know, you guys have this cool new project that you're working on uh, with MS Microcaps. So figure let's dive right in and talk that, you know, MS Microcaps. Maj, what do you got going on? Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, so I'm um, really appreciate this, Bobby, and I'm, I'm glad you're on here to join us as as um He's helped me a lot in this new project, as is my brother, but he couldn't make it today. Um, so Zoe's always busy. Don't worry about that. Zoe's <laughs> Zoo's fine. He's probably uh, yeah no, yeah yeah. So um yeah now look it's this is something me uh, Jan and I have been working on for some time now, really a couple of years, and 
been talking about it for three or four. You know how I I, I move slow sometimes, but you know some of these things I talk about all the time. And uh, so um, people we, saw me just nod and uh, <laughs> yeah, the video. Don't version. disagree with me. Yeah. No. yeah <laughs> so, um, talks so fast, he now. talks. He talks fast, but he moves slow. <laughs> yeah. We found, you know, we found a geo geo in two thousand. I think seven officially was founding date, and the first idea we launched was in oh no nine. And um, you know, the a lot of the idea generation from geo in the first before we started accepting contributory articles, and I think it was fourteen or fifteen. You know, it was all from that. You know, our analyst team, the organic kind of um, idea generation. As we would also we talked to our network of investors to get ideas you know, unofficially. Um, but a lot of the ideas come from what I, th these cliff notes that I write for my research pipeline. And, you know, the cliff note idea was, you know, I mean, obviously came from, for me, from Peter Lynch. Peter Lynch was a big, a big believer of, give me your idea quickly. You know, what, what is it? You remember, I know if you saw, I, I talked to Tim Heitman on one of my uh, skull session um, investor insight views, and he actually worked, you know, with, when Peter Lynch was a fidelity, he was there. He would he was on those calls once in a while and he you know, he didn't say yeah he would he would get on there and say give me your pitch real quick let me hear it and that's it so that's I you know it was one of those things where it just brought back the memory of me that's that's what I used to do so I used to actually have like a three ring rounder I write down my cliff notes and it was really just like two or three sentences really quick going through this list of stocks I had compiled that I wanted to go through at that time I was purely doing momentum based research so tracking stocks hitting new highs and then. Going through that, reducing the universe through, you know, I, I would omit banks, omit oil and gas, and down the line, and then, then left with a bunch of stocks that I had to, you know, parse through quickly to kind of prioritize my research. And also to have some kind of journal of, if I want to go back, you know, if I'm two years forward, I want to go back and in, in, in the pack in time, see what I was talking about in the stock. So, I, and, and I, you know, when I fast forward today, Geo, our back, our back end in Geo is full of these cliff notes that I that I've been kind of compiling, and even for Geo. So that basically was now a lot of those cliff notes don't make it a Geo though; they don't make it a Geo. Um, it's just my personal research notes, and because uh, um, I didn't want to overload uh, the Geo with all these, you know, all these all these ideas at one time, I thought it would get, it'd get confusing. Um, so we would just pick and choose which ones, but there's a lot of great stuff in those cliff notes. Um, and especially when you can go back in time and look how they did over time, you can say, wow, this is really some good stuff. Maybe it wasn't timely at the time he did it, but three or four years later, it became a really interesting story. So I decided, you know, okay, we know it's, let me think about that for a second. And um, when 2022 came around, um, I figured you know, this would be a great time to really reignite that research process again, you know, in steroids, because as you know, Bobby, and you know, I think, you know, you know Paul and Julie kind of echoes this. We, we, we on our last podcast that, you know, this really, I hate to call it value investing, but this traditional fundamental approach to investing is, seems to be like an, broadly accepted more than it was, you know, in that low interest rate environment for 15 years. Um, and when I say broadly, it's important because value investing always, you know, works to some degree. I mean, you're, you're looking for stuff under value, but then there's always so much money to go around, right? So when it was all chasing the big caps and the biotechs and pump and dumps and high growth companies and you know, no high P didn't matter, high P's didn't matter as long as you're growing quickly, high price to sales ratios, but a lot of that money just didn't find itself in a broad fashion across like a real broad portfolio, you know, of, of these stocks. So. Maybe you had to be concentrated, but so I thought like this. The 2022 was that changing of the guard we talked about, where now we're in a normal environment again and quality matters. So we figured, you know what? Let's take these notes that that I do, which is the which is the basically, you know, idea generation pipeline for Geo that a lot of maybe people don't see, and let's try and make some kind of product out of it and see what, what happens. So we started out and we want, I really was the whole theme was very simple. It was um, bringing these stocks. I would, you know, through, through momentum, we would use momentum screen to, to tech, bring the stocks in a funnel and then read about each story from a quantitative basis and qualitative basis to see which stock had kind of like a garbage feel to it. And it was undervalued, but had some interesting momentum, not only in price, but was going into a, um, 
a new growth period or an inflection point of growth, whether it was going to be five quarters, eight quarters, 10 quarters, whatever our analysis told us to do. And, you know, the MS and MS microcaps doesn't, is, you know, I'm not, it's not about my ego, it's not about my name. <laughs> it's about, the M stands for momentum, which is momentum and price. Uh, and, uh, and, the, and the S stands for sustainability. It's actually MSM and the MS for microcaps. So momentum and price, sustainability and business in the microcap arena. That's kind of the thesis of it. And um, and what I liked about these glyph notes was, I and mean, I've always liked about them, mm -hmm. it's it's forced me to very quickly, as quick as I can at least, get to the gist of things. What I like about the stock, what are the major themes, what are the, my research tasks I got to continue to do, to develop the idea if I want to go through with it, um, caveats, a little valuation, um, maybe copy and paste some comments, imaginary presentations, conference call transcripts, shareholder letters, and source links. That's my little journal. Now, obviously, that's not a clip, it's not a one line cliff note anymore. It's ex I expanded upon it. So these cliff notes can be anywhere from the way I described it to you, which is how most of them are. But sometimes it's just very quick because I want to get them out to to our subscribers quickly. If I can get the meat of an idea in a paragraph, we call that a cliff note brief. So here's just a brief about it, and just so you can see what we're thinking. Actually, CSPI, I don't know if you know that. See, it has been on fire software company recently, um, over the last few days, a few weeks. Um, that was a cliff note for us, but it was a cliff note brief, where I just, here's, it was simply a company offering you software products that's a bit to reduce lumpiness potentially in the business um, um, and, and to have more predictability in the business and to a, and, and, um, basically to complement their or give an additional business line to their IT business, which I was, I was a very boring IT kind of, um, you know, um, consulting business, which would lumpy that this was going to basically give them more maybe predictability and a higher sexier type of profile. And that was it, really. And there was anything else. And in in we put it in the index to let in the stock is, is up, I think, 16 bucks now. It's $50 now. Um, and I don't, you know, look, we, and, and, so we have this. This we so when we take it when we take a cliff note, we automatically add it to our index. We call it the MSM quality index, basically. And these are just to see what would happen. So when we started building this thing in, in 2022, we didn't know what was going to happen. What I was hoping was this style of investing, which was all I used for the first 20 years of my career before the uh, the uh, 08 implosion, was what I used to really powerful returns year after year using this. Um, and what we wanted is, I wanted to see, I wanted to kind of find out like where would the diminishing returns occur? Where, how many stocks would be too many stocks where the, the index couldn't perform anymore? You know, cause there's, there's always this concentration versus diversification kind of battle going on, right? And, you know, when I first started investing uh, early on off the Peter Lynch book, who had owned thousands of stocks, I, I had like early in my career at one point, like 400 stocks. <laughs> Still performing really well. I mean, like doubling every year. Um, and I'll get I'll get back to why I think that is in, in, a, in a second. So I was really curious to see you know what what would happen here. Um, and um, with and by the way, I was doing very I wasn't doing very um, concentrated positions. They were very diversified kind of positions I was taking when I was younger doing that because I, I wasn't ready to be a concentrated investor when I first started. Um, so I wanted to see him. Okay, what's going to happen now? And we we noticed beautiful things after a few months of this thing launching uh, in February of 22. Uh, and we saw that the returns were, you know, were actually pretty amazing. So basically what it is, again, combining interesting company. What we say is this. We say quality companies in the nano cap, the small cap space um, that are garbage. Plus, we're also looking for high probability turnarounds. So they might not be looking like great quality. So we're combining in our thesis, our family was like, you know, if we have a diversified portfolio, it's okay to have some turnarounds in there where companies losing money if we think they're going to go into a new a growth thing coming up soon. Because the, the, the kind of diversify that risk away, maybe. And some of those, some of those stocks, you know, Bobby, can be some of the best stocks over the long run. So you wanted to give the index some of that exposure. So right now, I think we just added our 80th, 80th stock to the, to the portfolio or the, the index. So we've been pretty busy in two years. It is, you know, we have, and I'm going to show you what, what these notes look like in a second. Um, so it was uh, the current return on the portfolio now um, is 34.1%. Uh, 
Now that's over 80 stocks. That's by the way, that's not like taking out stocks and probably shouldn't be there anymore. We want to have no bias in terms of uh, what uh, with the index. We want to see in the worst case scenario, if we didn't remove anything that we think should be gone, we still want to keep it in there. We want to see how this will turn out, like in the worst case scenario. So that current return is 34%. The high return on this over that period was 81.2%, which I think is pretty freaking amazing. Um, and it wasn't just the first, it was it was within like maybe six months, I think, maybe. I don't know when the, the high was, the high print was achieved, but we had enough stocks in there, I think, to... Maybe yeah, and it's it also keep keeps on growing, you know, so it's been 60, maybe six months ago. Now it's it was 73 months ago. Now it's 80. It keeps on increasing because some of them are, you know, hitting hitting really uh, big, big returns. Yeah. And our, my theory is going to be, I hope if it plays out, if I'm around 10 years from now, is I think I think these, uh, like the better companies are going to get better, better over time. And it's going to start really cause this flywheel effect with maybe a year three, four or five. These returns get supercharged maybe at some point. Um, but if you look at the indexes, for example, over that time period, um, is, so we were, we're now with 30. Well, hey, Mosh, not, not, not to cut you off real quick, but I just wanted to pepper in a question because, you know, e even you kind of were like, oh, we added to the portfolio, I mean, to the index, you know. So I wanted to understand, you know, why you decided to put this together in more of like a, you know, a tier one index versus just kind of a model portfolio of like, hey, here are 75 stocks based on or 80 stocks now based on my on my cre criteria. I'm writing cliff notes now based on these 80 stocks to give you an update on, you know, these because these fit everything that we look for in that. And here you can follow the returns for this model portfolio slash index now. Like why, why, why specifically is an index versus have it just be a model portfolio right so i guess that's a good question because right? you know geo that's we have model portfolios uh, and, and they're generally anywhere from we have maybe five to seven stocks right, right, right. and then we have a long-running dis disclosure portfolio of all the stocks that we're bringing in that we can choose from um the reason being because i didn't know what this i i, I didn't know how this is going to turn out right away you know so now i have a now now we have two years in I can start thinking of new things to do with the index, right? I can start now, what we can do now, what we really want to do is create a quality place to hunt from. So Yon has this tier one space in general that we've created, okay? But means we have some criteria that we use that I talked about before, 10 point criteria. I think like seven quantitative and three qualitative. And then from there, we try and bring up some of those stocks at the right, you know, I hate to use the right time, but at interesting times into the index. So now we've proven that's kind of working now. Um, and then now we're thinking, you know, what's, what's the next evolution of this product going to be? Is it going to be taking many model portfolios from there? One of the best model portfolios we do with Geo, for example, is a buy on pullback portfolio. Mm -hmm. We buy stocks that, and, and we will be add stocks to the portfolio that have fallen for, for, we believe, temporary reasons or the wrong reasons. And we've launched um, 11 of those at Geo. We closed 10 of them all uh, uh, pop, nine of them were positive returns it's, i mean crazy returns on the positive side and we have the 11th one running right now which is doing really i think up 25 percent in the last three four months but it's seven stocks so and, and um there, i think this is gonna this we're thinking this this is not like really a recommendation service it's not a buy this you know it's really more of a situation for those investors who want a hunting ground for the some of the better stocks in, in the nano cap space, the small cap space, and who also want to, if, if they're doing their own research, maybe they can reference these cliff notes uh, or it can spawn idea generation. If you're a new kid, you know, looking to, to start getting into investing, I think cliff notes is a great way to really st start thinking about how to really start your research process. 100%. And listen, uh, as someone that publishes an index, like I get it, even with a, a, a universe of, you know, anywhere between 500 to 521 stocks as part of our index, which we still rebalance on a quarterly basis, you know, with, I'd say an average of somewhere between 60 to 80% um, 
uh, of turnover. Um, that's a lot of stocks. <laughs> it's a lot of stocks for anybody to kind of go through and, you know, pick out, you know, which ones they want to dive further into and whatnot and, and all that. Right. And also our criteria is much more different, right? Ours is more based on just purely quantitative, um, metrics and right. as, as and, and quite, you know, I don't want to say rudimentary, but like, you know, not digging into like, you know, PE ratios or, you know, price, sure. to book, EBIT, you know, price, to EBIT. Well, that's, that's why this is kind of cool because we, we do that. Right. right? We, but, which, I, at... which is what I like about it. And I find it and find interesting that, cause I do think that we need more of things like this, where we have a tier one quality index, which is what you guys are calling it. You know, just uh, Ian's doing, you know, with the MCC profitable index, you know, these are important things that I think from, you know, especially in the micro cap space, we really need to help folks that, you know, maybe are kind of dipping their toe and just trying to find a place to start from an idea generation perspective. Well, I think that's Otherwise, the right time you can get lost, man. <laughs> you can. And I think it's the right and especially now because, oh, yeah. well, it's the right time now. We, we, it's definitely in. There's, a, there's, this, there's this broad, if you look at the returns, like we're at 34%, you look at the NASDAQ was up, is up 16% during that time, SPY 15, the Russell 2000 up 1%, and then the the the, uh, the Meyer Cap ETF, 3.6%. So we're killing the indexes, right? But so I, so I think that right now, because it's doing so well in the market, like if you if you are actually one of those individuals just looking at the Russell to kind of define what's going on in the, in the Meyer Cap Index, you don't see what's going on in the underbelly. Or, or plan micro cap. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are. Our, our, and listen, ours is more for the general, like to yeah. get a general sense of what's going on. Like, it serves a purpose. What you're doing, yeah, for sure. Exactly. It, it is the sentiment of the space. We're taking the a Russell. segment of the space. Segment, of, you know. <laughs> and but because there's, it's when I hear someone like, "Oh my gosh, the uh, buyer cap stuff right now." Well, they don't. If you're willing to go get out of that 15 years, you might have been trained to look at all those hypeish stuff. It's value investing or garbage investing, we want to call it, it's working under the hood. It's working too good now. There's too many ideas coming, which is why even this is more important because it's, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy how this is working again. Um, and what's wild and is like, you'll, you'll see, we'll see the overlap, you know, like it's pretty, it's pretty obvious when you see like the ones, you know, the quality micro caps, like even, even in Planet Micro Cap, the ones that have had, you know, decent performance like i'm pretty sure wait i mean you what's in your top tier you got or in your tier one quality you got cxdo in there right you got um do you well the the, the, the tier mm -hmm. that's not index not, not, oh that's uh, not in your tier one well, that's not, it's all oh, it's a tier it's not in this index no oh okay gotcha okay at, at that time there were things going on where i didn't think it belonged there unfortunately unfortunately so the, this, is, up, this, this is a good segue let's talk a little bit more about the criteria for companies to be included on the tier one quality index and maj you've talked enough right now i'm going to get i'm going to go to jan to get okay. some, to <laughs> sure. some of that sure yeah yeah i mean i think that you know <laughs> to 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 talk about it in in a in a kind of straightforward way i would say that you know really distills maj's uh, 30 year you know plus pro investment process and really just gives us the stocks that you know, he can, you know, understand very quickly what's going on. You know, it's really this kind of, with research, you always have this kind of problem that you do 80% of the work in one hour, in the first hour, and the 20% of the research, which might be crucial, but, you know, it, it takes ages, it can take days, you know, whatever have you. But I think those 80% of the research can really be done within an hour, especially with the team that we have, because we have so much experience. So therefore, I think that, the you know the criteria we can definitely talk about the single single criteria that we we you know we we talk about when we when we call something tier one quality but i think in general perspective it really does distill the process of the 30 year plus experience the maj has uh and then we you know we build out and and really makes it um you know very quick and efficient uh, uh and and brings the ideas um uh, uh you know the, the fastest way possible so it's just the general kind of um, idea of what it really is you know it's like you get into maj's head and you can see the ideas and you can see it as quickly as possible um and that's that's really what 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 i think is 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 so powerful here uh because then you start seeing the the ideas you can start seeing returns 
and you know it makes a lot of sense that you know you you get it on it early or you know you can use it for research in the past as well so that's kind of the basic um if that makes sense and think about this too if i was gonna if i was gonna distill it down yawn and bobby like in a really short kind of sentence it takes basically our 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 10 point checklist of tier one criteria marries it with um you know a little valuation analysis plus looking at this to, to add these stocks at the time they were hitting some of our multi-bagger markers we look at maybe ten, eight or nine ten of them right now so when those tier one companies are hitting those markers and throw are undervalued that's what qualifies to go to the index so the tier you know, what's very important in the index is capital structure outstanding share count dilution we're looking for really companies that don't have to raise money. And I don't, I don't we, that would have been a good stat to run on, you know, but I don't, I bet you that 90% of the companies haven't raised money in our index, or if, if I don't yeah, know of any. Yeah, sure. We can, we can check because, and that's, and everyone's, you know, you hear everyone tweet about that right now, um, Bobby, it's dilution, dilution is, is your worst enemy in stocks, and everyone knows that. Um, And so, but we're looking for stocks like, you know, we, you know, been around for a long time, great management, you know, insider ownership, has revenue uh, at or near profitability, um, manageable debt burden. If it's a turnaround, it's high probability turnaround. Uh, shares outstanding are not too excessive and no need to raise money. I think that's most of them. And then on the multi-bagger side, we're looking for companies, okay, that are hitting some, multi our, some of our favorite multi-bagger markers, getting more wallet share, like getting more revenue from each of the current customers, um, operating leverage, you know, um, these kind of things. New industry dynamics going on that are affecting the company. You know, a boring company turning beautiful because things are going on. So we look at these things, and it's it's really not hard once you have once you figure this all out. To really, it's it's a lot. There's so many stocks out there that meet these criteria. You really look hard enough, um, and um, that's basically the essence. It's marrying out the quality plus the multi bagger kind of traits at the same time. Can can we do right and Part of it really it's about the earnings too. We are looking for companies that are just going to simply grow earnings and are undervalued on that growth. And so, we on our earnings power ranking in, internally, we develop earnings, earnings power rankings in companies to see where they rank in their earnings growth. Right. So here, let's get let's get an example on both sides. I want an example of when you, in the process of doing your research, you're like, okay, this company now qualifies for us to put into the uh tier one quality index and then also on the other side of like oh you know what this one it's time time to kick these guys out and also like how do you respond to folks where they might be like all right hey you know this one's underperforming and you're just you know kicking it out just to make sure the tier one you know performance looks nice you know what i'm saying like Love to hear. I know I just threw like five questions at you. But no, no, I got well, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think you see. I think you see what I'm going. If you want to say we're not removing any stocks right now, we 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 well, we have a what we call the active index, which is on the side, which we which we run in parallel. We we, we remove stocks to see if it's going to do better than the, than the passive. So we have the passive one, which is basically never removes a stock. So it goes in, never leaves. Then we have the active one, which tries to remove them. You know, and that's really not that much better than the passive right now. Which is which we think is interesting. Um, so that answers that question, Bobby. But in terms of, um, let me show you an example of a cliff note. And by the way, we have a we have a Substack by the way for this um, MS Microcaps Substack, right? Right, right on. That's the um, MS Cliff Notes Substack. Yeah, yeah, it's called MS Cliff Notes. Yeah. MS Cliff Notes, um, where you can get a taste of what we're doing. And I'm going to show you a screenshot um, of what some of these might look like here. Oh, hold on a second. So I'm going to give you two examples, Bobby, like one of a short form cliff note and one of a, a longer form. And that's really the challenge in this really is for us is keeping them short. It's not, it's not easy. It's like they, sometimes they get a little long. Um, and that's one of the challenges we, we're facing here and there is how do you, what's short, what's short enough? What's, what's not long too, you know, what's, what's too long. Um, because we don't, we're not here to write articles and stuff, but here we go. Um, let's go here. I think this is a good one. Yeah, so this is uh, MT, M Matrix Services, MTRX. You know, it's like an oil services company, I guess. Um, and 
you know, we what we do here is just a simple, this is a, you know, a here's the themes that we have for the company. The Big Cap Micro, which Big Cap Micro was a stock, for example, and this is where a lot of our index is kind of being represented, are these micro cap companies that have a lot of revenue. We call those Big Cap Micros. So they might have 50 million to at least 100 million in minimum revenue or more. There's this misconception, I think, by a lot of people that all, all these nano caps are small revenue generating companies. Well, that's not the case at all. So you know, and I, I will add this, what's great about the index, dude, this is awesome about it, is that it enables us to have a, because you have diversification, this is an equally weighted index. We can have this, all these different themes going on. We can have, we can have a little bit of big cap micro, we can have a little bit of turnarounds, a little bit of illiquid nano caps. And it really gives you an idea, a way to have this kind of um, exposure to a lot of different areas without, and if you think about it as a diversified um, portfolio with a lot, a lot of exposure to each stock, you don't, you, you don't even, you, you psychologically handle it better. You, if a stock goes down, you don't care because, you know, you, you need more money when stocks go up and they go down. You only lose 100%, but you can make, we're going to hit some multibaggers here and you're going to make a lot more money on the multibagger side. So this one was a recently one we added, I think maybe a month ago or so, or six weeks ago. I can't remember exactly. So we give you a quick, quick look at the data, right? And we'll we'll probably be expanding the data fields as we move on through with notes, add, add more pieces of data as we go along. So you get a quick example of you know the um, revenue, you know the the debt balance sheet. As um, as you can see, these are this guy's losing money. Um, but we think obviously we think it's going to make money moving forward. So we we, we show what that looks like. Some of the best money you can make in stocks is buying them when they don't look pretty, and when they and they become they come pretty. Um, and so we go down here. This is a quick evaluation. Why we, a quick paragraph? Why we like it? Caveats: a couple quotes from management, research tasks we need to do to understand the company more. That's a short. Cliff note, right? And this is that, and this is that we have some that are actually shorter than this called Cliff Note Briefs. But this allows us to bring an idea to a, to our subscribers like right away. Now let me show you a different one over here. Let me see if this will work here, actually. Does that did that change the symbol change? DRX? Yep. 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 So this is when we, you know, this is a little longer though. This is a um, you know, a metal fabrication, I think, company here. And we used to use, look, this is a lot, a lot meatier. You know, this one we get into what they do a, a little, and we dump, we try and dummy down what, what's, what they do too in layman terms a lot of times for, for the reader to read. Um, we go into now the, the, all the reasons we're tracking. So the one I showed you before, which was MTRX, which is one paragraph, boom, the Peter Lynch style. This one is all the reasons we're looking at the track it and why we think it's interesting, even as the stock has gone up recently. We do a little evaluation on it. We still do the caveats, research tasks, quotes from investor presentation, in this case, the source. Um, and that's that's that. So that gives you a good idea of like the different types of notes that go with the go with the index. So that which is pretty cool. So if you're actually out there hunting for this stuff, um, now you this is this is a great way to start. I think now what you were asking, um, Bobby, like what when would the stock not make the index? It's usually either on valuation, even if it looks in, like an interesting story, or because of capital structure. There's two big areas that we that we're looking at. And, you know, we are looking to. I should mention this too. Uh, we're looking for great long term stories, but we are looking to add stocks to the index we think are undervalued right now not just five years from now. So we get a little bit of short-term opportunity in some of these companies. And I think that's important too. Uh, part of, that's why it's a pretty powerful, um, I think, tool right now, why it's, why it's working. That's um, so what you can also see that in the average uh, peak return, right? So Maj was saying that the current return is 34% for all of them, but on average, they were up as much as 81%. And so that, that clearly shows, you know, that there have been really big moves uh, throughout the time and we also did like a kind of performance of the of the movers so it's not really just like one stock hitting ten thousand percent and the other ones you know languishing or whatever it you know we had about like uh 10 or 11 uh um stocks that are currently up more than 100 percent and stuff like this but the bottom line is that you know there is that peak return which really means you know that they they really move up quite quickly 
um, uh, and then uh, you know then they might come back for whatever reason. Uh, but but yeah, it definitely shows that there's a, there's a lot of uh, a lot of initial movement uh, movement happening. No, well, you guys, you know what, you know, and looking at this, and I mean, we do this for with our newsletter for for the index, is I'd love to see a kind of a weekly update, you know, on how the how the index is performing, you know, maybe a little bit as to why, like what's driving that, right? You know, I mean, I know you just kind of launched this and stuff, but that would be fascinating, I'm sure, even for your subscribers, so that they could see, like we we do that, we're on like a weekly basis, like top top. 10 performers, top 10 decliners from the index. You know, I'd be curious to follow along and see that too. And it, it's 75, sto- 80 stocks, you know, you guys could, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> give us a little, you know. No, you're, you're right. And I think that's what Jan and I are talking about. What we want is just prove the concept out. Now we're asking ourselves, what's the next evolution of the product? And I think it is a weekly or monthly, weekly and monthly type of updates. Yeah. Trying to actually give the subscribers a better chance of, distilling the universe to help them find stuff right and look it's not just it's not just like we're saying okay you're on your own we are trying to add stocks here we think are really good stocks to, to consider but we're not here to give investment advice and we're not here to really at this point create model portfolios yet because we want to get more data to see how we can do that you know and i think that's important if you look and so this is this is really and i want i want yeah, I, I wanted want, to ask you about that because if there's one thing that i think you get you get Black on sometimes is that some you know some of your picks are just so illiquid you know what I'm saying so well, it's, I like it's, it's, I like it's going to be a li- the, the pushback you're going to get in liquid the second pushback you're going to get well is only a few stocks yeah. that and I think these stats here which y'all can go over here um, can yeah um, really yeah tell that's that. it's really sure yeah, yeah 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 so first of all you know we can see that there's been a, a vari- variety of performers. I mean, this this is uh, from from uh, uh, late January uh, this year. So basically, like we don't have the the latest three four stocks there, but it doesn't it doesn't matter much. Like the idea is the, the same. You know, we're we're really having a wide wide variety of the of the performances, both on the car and on the peak. Right, you can see that you know there has been really a lot of uh, multi baggers already. Um, and that's what really drives the, the, the high peak return, right? The 81%. Um, and that's, that's just really important. There is not, there are a couple of runaway stocks, which obviously have, you know, 500, 400%, but it really is not, uh, you know, uh, uh, just driven by, by one or two, two big performers, especially since it's, you know, 70 plus stocks already now, 80, as we said, you know, that there's just no way that the, the current return would be driven by just a few. And the others would be in complete, you know, mass down fifty percent or so. Uh, so that's number one. So that's that's the the range of the performances, and then also the volume, which is really really important, I think, uh, because it clearly shows that you know uh, this this stuff is liquid. You know, there's no there's just nothing um, uh, that would be hard to buy. There are obviously like a couple of uh, stocks where it's really on a daily basis quite hard. But even, you know, if uh, we, we, we say, uh, you know, that you need at least 100000 in a daily, val- daily volume, like $100,000, right, uh, you, you, get six, you, you can buy 60% of the, the index, right? So that's really like major. You're not going to be buying uh, the whole float, you know, of the day or anything like that um, uh, in, in many of the stocks. That's really, really important. And I think that's what, yeah, like. Usually, you know, people say micro caps. Okay, I can't buy it. It's too small. Doesn't matter. No, that's just not the not the case with the index. So that's really really important for us. I mean, there are twenty eight percent of stocks that have more than a million in average daily daily volume, right? Like, um, even if you have three hundred million dollar portfolio, like that's doable. Like you you can build a you can build something there. So uh, obviously it's going to, you know, it's, it's going to get harder as you scale the AUM, but like, yeah, within micro caps, it's really like the major point here. And also, I, again, I, I, I think most of us have less than a million dollars. Exactly. I'm just <laughs> saying, you know, that when you think about micro caps, you, know, you would say, oh, you know, I can't, you know, I have 300 million or I have 100 million in AUM. Like I can maybe allocate 5 million. Well, right. that's, yeah, other case. Um, and also the most important thing is that, uh, 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 you know, the volume, you know, the average return is not skewed by some low float stock jumping 200%, even though we had like one, for example, Mojo that uh, really flew a lot. 
but there's just not the single one that would raise the raise the return because once you volume weight the 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 index so it's basically right now it's just on the return right you know uh uh the the weighting or you know the average but mm -hmm. basically once you would at, attach the volume and 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 as if you're playing with money right as if you're actually buying stocks that are more liquid and you buy more of them because they constitute more of the daily volume you know you would actually end up slightly better uh, than than the current return or it although it changes but basically again it shows that you know you're not just buying a bunch of stocks that trade under ten thousand uh, dollars a day and you know they trade they 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 jump 100 percent. so yeah you know, my, my favorite one of my favorite stats here got uh bobby is this one over here at, at the, the peak returns that um we had 76 percent of stocks were up, were up at least 20 percent at one point that tells me that you know, this index gives you a lot of chances to get some winners. And 20% isn't, you know, isn't bad. I think you were hitting that mark for uh, for that many companies. So I thought that was pretty interesting. No, oh, 100%. So, I mean, also, what's your guys' personal exposure to um, the stocks that are on this top tier quality index? Do you Are you shareholder? I mean, you mentioned three specifically so far with MTRX, ADF, and... Um, uh, I don't know off the hand if I have in this, Bobby, right now. I think I might... Um, but I'm not buying all of them at this point. I mean, the, 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 the initial thing for this index was really to make sure it works, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's proven that. So now I'm a hundred percent, you know, I'm like my current portfolio isn't like this. It's very, it's very concentrated right now. Mm -hmm. As my concentration rolls off, I 110% plan on and going, and this is what I did when I was a, a, a kid, I'm going to go back to it. And I, and I was not as sexy as being a concentrated investor, but <laughs> and it's not as glamorous, you know. Um, doesn't get all the talk, but there's nothing wrong with being diversified and, and, and uh, amongst a great set. This it, it gets me back to this kind of moment with like O'Shaughnessy and his study about layer caps, right? So, his I think it was 90 plus year study showing how they, they you know, the, the smaller decile, the smallest decile of the market cap, you know, spectrum. Beats the larger cap by what eight point eight point two four percent, I think, on an annual compound average basis. It's he's just showing you that just being involved in that universe long term, doing nothing at all, right? Not even looking for the best shit works. All we're doing now is doing a similar thing, you know. I won't. We won't have a hundred year study. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but maybe we'll have a, a 15 10 years out of year right which it, it has to, it just has to it has to work you're already playing in a field that has to work and the cool thing i like about the diversification factor bobby is that um it, like i said briefly it gives you exposure to a lot of different areas it lets you take some risks you maybe wouldn't take um if you if, if you if you if were diversified Gives you exposure to a lot of different. It becomes like lose money, I like turnarounds. It's just a lot of fun too, and for, for me, it's, it's, it's an incredible learning experience because you just keep learning and learning and learning and learning and learning by doing these cliff notes and by learning about different industries the whole time. It's a lot of. I find it to be a lot of fun. Um, it's fascinating. The, no, no, I, I find it fascinating. I, I, I'm really, I'm thankful that you're doing stuff like this and. Um, so we have um, right now. We, as you know, we do we do Canada. We about twenty percent of the index. Is in Canada right now, and the rest is the rest is U.S. Okay, that's something I wanted want to kind of point out. Another thing here, industry wise, um, we have um, really good kind of cross section right now of, of industry. But you'll, what you see here is industrials, boring industrials, which which I, I love boring. Boring, is, boring is beautiful. That's where a lot of and I didn't know how this was going to play out when y'all did this. I didn't know where this was going to like where it was gonna, how how was going to look, <laughs> you know, and. Um, but it gives me exposure to some finances, which, which I wouldn't normally invest in myself. Energy, I barely invest in energy because I just think it's too hard to predict. But we have some exposure there. But now that we see this, this is in this interesting. Jan and I can go back and say, well, what's missing here? And maybe we might want to go start doing some screens on certain industries that aren't in here yet that we might want to take a look at uh, and, and add to the index a little bit too. So you can see this is a great cross section. Um, this this one I thought was really interesting too because um, 
66% of the stocks are making money on a trailing month basis. But what would be interesting on, we should we should next maybe work on is how many of these are profitable on a four basis too, based on estimates that we have. That'd be a cool stat to have to show. Um, I think that would be a, that would be definitely a larger percentage. Yeah, because that's where we are, that's where we're basing a lot of our decisions on too. <clears> but it's it's really cool to see that you can have the kind of performance we had by still having some of these riskier type of stocks in the portfolio. The average PE is only 17, which isn't which isn't horrible. Um, and the total income generated by all stocks in the index is 581 million, which shows I love that stat because it shows not that you have quality, you have people companies making money for the economy in nano caps. These are not all shitty freaking companies. You know, I mean, it's 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 really drives the point home that you can't that you can't. Now, what I like about this too is, you know, there's a debate going on. You know, like, you know, is it, should should you only look at profitable companies? Should you only look at you know, I think you can do both. But obviously, when you're looking at companies that don't make money or are on the cusp of it, um, it's important to understand that they will make money soon in the future. That's that's the important part about it. I think really. No, what I really like about this too, and and I, I was telling you offline that um, you know, I just did an interview with uh, Brian Bears from from Bears Capital Management, and he made a really interesting point about how, you know, even though the universe of microcaps is shrinking, it's almost the thesis is that the market. This is actually an encapsulation of the market becoming more efficient because there's less. Of these companies where you know at one point it was relatively cheap to be you know public company and not as expensive as it is today but that's now cutting out a lot of the i'm sure there's quality businesses now that have gone private or were on the pinks that are now private you know as well but i'd say the majority of like the more you know less lesser quality names are now just either deciding to delist go private or you know Completely out of business already, you know, and yeah. it's it's things like these that actually show that there are still, you know, you can still be a quality business and public earlier on yeah. in your life cycle. You know, that's really what we're talking about here. Do man, it's like you know what I'm saying. We have we're having the slow attrition of really crappy companies that are going going to going to slowly go out of business, which means there's gonna be more money for these companies, and that's what's happening right now. And you have these periods of pump and dumps, but these small companies that were they, they can't raise money anymore with their debt equity or they're all a lot of them are just going to go out of business which which is going to be i never wish anyone to go out of business it's not not happy about it but it's going to be good for the capital's got to go somewhere so it's going to find its way into these stocks now if we go if we come back into a situation where we're at two percent rates again one day the story may change that at that point again i don't know how that will play out but I do, I do believe that the 15-year bull market that we had before 22 was not the norm. And the 20-year bull market that I was, you know, mostly involved in, we had some issues here and there before that was the norm. And then the years before that was the norm, where actually quality mattered when you had a normal, normal kind of environment. Um, and I think the next 10, 15 years is going to be what we're doing now is going to be where a lot, a lot, a lot of the bull market is going to be, be in. And I am going on the record saying it's it's a several year bull market we're going to be in in these in these kind of companies. It doesn't matter what the I don't care what the market's going to do anymore. It it or I never really do, but it's all going to be about the company, um, and it's going to matter. And I think that's going to be a beautiful kind of bull market we're going to be in in these in these companies. And we're just I think we're just I think we're in the very early innings of it. And you have a lot of companies, for example, that restructured during COVID and during twenty two. We haven't even seen begin to see those results come out yet how they're going to do there's this, whole, there's this whole second line of wave of companies that still have yet to kind of catch up to the, the restructuring they did yet but their income still hasn't come up yet to, 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 to uh, reflect that yet so that's going to be a really exciting piece of the puzzle too i think um and uh, so i'm just really really happy of this and you know yawn my brother we're all working hard but i do want to um on our, on our next our, our next um podcast we do bobby talk about even a bigger product i'm really happy about so it's an it's, an it's always something that, bigger man yeah <laughs> right there's always there's always something bigger there's always a bigger crazier project that he's got he's got going on now he's living me with <laughs> sure this is, this and it, will, and it, will, it will be part of the msm uh package here but it's it's a research tool 
which I think is game breaking and, and game changing because that's I when we talk about it, it's the tool is a big part of my research and it's taking my research from six hours to maybe 40 minutes using this using this particular type of research tool. And uh, I don't know if it's going to cater to the masses, but if you do the research the way I do it, part of it, it's going to be really, really, really awesome tool that you're going to love. Listen, so all I got to say is as, it, as, as long as you keep MS at the beginning so that I can make fun of you and call, you know, miss my yeah. and miss, <laughs> miss investor tools, then, yeah. um, you know, then I'm all for it. Uh, yeah. I, I, I love it, man. It's we are gender neutral. Okay. <laughs> Very, don't, get me, don't get me sued, Bobby. <laughs> oh, man. Good stuff. All right. Let's put a bow on this, dude. So, where can everybody go and subscribe to uh, MS Cliff Notes um, on Substack, as well as, you know, your your little thing you got going on over at GM Investing? Yeah. So, uh, I th um, Jan, I think um, we have it at uh, MS mscliffnotes.substack.com but if you just google mscliffnotes and substack will be there there is also twitter associated with that my twitter is my name Svendian. and uh yeah and you can go for your plugin yeah my my, my twitter is um you know at maj geobesting also you can go to geobesting twitter handle is at geobesting and then um uh, at mscliffnotes uh, is it um i think that's what it is right Jan? It's relatively yeah, I think so. Yeah. But you, yeah, you you will find it if you Google around basically with MS Cliff Notes. Yeah. That's the at, that's the key term. At, at MS Microcaps is a Twitter handle. It's been 90, 90 followers and young. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I just started. I think you were eighty nine or eighty eight. I, I was eight. Yeah, I think it was eighty nine <laughs> or eighty eight. It's all like that. Cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, dudes, I really appreciate it. This was fun learning all about the project. I'm definitely going to be following along here. I'll probably, hey, if you give me like your weekly update or a place to track it, I'll, I'll include it in our newsletter right. as well so that people can see, you know, how much, uh, you know, better they're performing. And we, and we, and we might be back. Uh, and I should say, we might be packaged as a deal, like, you know, maybe a geo, but if you, here's geo investing. If you want to see all the research that supports the pipeline, MS is an option too. So maybe we'll have, do it that way too. We haven't really, gotten in the way yet and we'll be doing there but yeah sure. so sounds good all right dudes i'll let that. you go i'll let you go thank you so much for joining me today really do appreciate it. Good oh, luck. Stay way, safe. oh sorry. one more thing yeah jan can you see your twitter yeah your handle again didn't come out for your twitter handle uh, uh i think it's my name so it's like sven dayan like okay, i yep. think cool. s-v-e-n-d-a yeah i yeah. think so Very all cool. right all right i'll put it in the or show just list. jan svenda there we go yeah, yeah you can just it's fine it's easy Sweet. All right, dudes. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Look forward to the next update. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks. This podcast is for informational purposes only and is not an offer or solicitation of an offer to buy or sell securities. SNN Network, SNN Inc., and the Planet Microcap Podcast and the representatives are not licensed brokers, broker dealers, market makers, investment bankers, investment advisors, analysts, or underwriters. We do not recommend any companies discussed. We may buy and sell securities in any company mentioned and may profit in the event those securities rise in value. We recommend you consult with a professional investment advisor, broker, or legal counsel before purchasing or selling any securities referenced in this podcast podcast.